Yo, yo. What's up? What's up? I want to thank you for joining us at Sound Off. It's your boy K Paper Chase, and let's get ready to sound off. All right. So it's been a little while, y'all. So I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, I just wanted to drop in and do the part two to the quantum leap. So hopefully you all saw my first video with the quantum leap. Because what I was talking about, I was talking about micro, which are the very small things, and just how things kind of work on a quantum level with very small things. And today is going to be part two. So part two, we're going to talk about macro. All right. So macro is the very large things. And then we're going to tie those together. And then on my part three, that's going to be the good part, because I'm going to give you practical steps on how to use this micro and macro once you understand it. So we can start making those leaps. So um, let's get ready to go. All right, let's see. All right. So yeah, so this is part two. And this is quantum leap. So yeah, so we talked about micro. Now we're going to talk about macro. So everything between micro and macro relates. So once we understand how these two things relate, um, it'll be easier for us. Uh, one thing that a lot of people say, if you heard it, um, I think I had it on my karma video, the concept of as above, so below. So you can think of that sort of as um, what I'm talking about, the micro and the macro, because just as things act on a very, very small nuclear level, they're also the same things on a large a level. So like I was saying in the earlier video, everything that's really small is part of the whole. So you should be able to take any part of that small thing and it contains the whole. So of course, the whole will contain the small part. So they're very, very related, but they're just on other sides of the scale. Okay. All right, so how I like to look at it is like this, okay? So if you look at the micro, like I said, those are the very small things. So this is the cell, and it's very, very small, and it even gets smaller. So it goes smaller and smaller into infinity. In the very middle, this is us, so this is the human. And then I put the macro as the stars, not necessarily the outer space stars, but basically the projections and kind of like portals, because that is the big picture. So if you look at it, humans, we're right in the middle. So we would actually be macro to the germ right here or to the cell, and we'll be micro to the macro. So you see what I'm saying? We're right in the middle. So if you're comparing us to those small scales, we will be the micro, that will be the macro. But we, when we're looking at larger things like portals and stars, that's the macro, and we will be the micro to that. So we can actually relate to both of them. So it's pretty cool. We are right there in the middle, depending on what you know what we're talking about, which way we're going to go down to very infinitely small stuff or go up to the stuff that's so big that we can't imagine. And keep in mind that all this stuff goes on until infinity. So just like that micro, you can actually go further, deeper into the micro. So example of micro from my perspective would be things like cells. We can't even see these with the human eyes, but when we zoom in, we can see these cells. And it's real interesting because even if you look closer, there are different cells or different parts of this cell. So that's what I was saying. It keeps getting smaller and smaller. So if we were even to zoom in, even on micro, it still gets smaller. So we can get smaller and smaller until infinity. And we'll eventually get so small to the points that we can't even see them. We can't, you know, we can't get that small. It's just a real interesting concept. And the macro, this means the large. So, yeah, this is the bigger picture. This is all of what encompasses us. So you can think of macro as our universe. So that's why I made it great. Like I said, it's not necessarily out of space, but it's how all the universe is all of what encompasses us. Then with our universe, we're the kind of universe to the cells. We're their universe. And even to the cells, they have, they're the universe, maybe to the protons and neutrons, you know, then they got the quirks and they got the strings. So it gets smaller and smaller. So there's no way to really measure that. So that's the thing about infinity. Um, 
and infinity can't be measured. And it's on and on, never stops. And the thing about this, um, what we're talking about now is that we're going to be able to kind of tap into that infinity. Because if the word is infinite, then that means every possibility has to be somewhere. And in order to quantum jump, what you're trying to do is you're trying to jump into another one of those realities. Now, one of the things is that um, it does take practice. It does take skill. And you're not going to be able to jump so far from where you already are. So it's a concept called transurfing that I'm going to talk about in a later video. And it's kind of related to this, but it's going to be good because it just shows you practical ways to kind of change your thinking and it makes it easier to make that shift. But most of the time, uh, you know, when you make a jump, it's going to be something similar to what you already have. So just think about asking yourself a question like, what if I had decided to uh, work late this day? What would happen? You know, it might be something like that, but it's not going to be somewhere where you're going to jump somewhere where like the physical realm, the laws of physics are different, or it's going to be too far from yourself. So, you know, and we go up and down, we do these things hundreds of times a day. We're just not aware of it. So, yeah, we want to bring that awareness out so we can recognize what's going on. Just remember that Big Bang happens every time you have a thought. So every time we have a thought, we make a decision, then it automatically creates another infinite world every time we make a thought. So it's sort of like a Big Bang. So we're creating the ones that we focus our thoughts on or kind of the ones that we follow or that particular you know, realm that we're in. So yeah, let's open the door. You know, it's a new life that awaits. But we can think of ourselves more as energy. You know, learn how to use the electromagnetism. That means we'll be able to better mold and kind of shape our surroundings and our environment because we create the environment that we live in. This is looking at it at a very scientific level, very cellular level, so that you can understand it. Once you understand it on this end, it'll be a lot easier to manipulate the physical world. Now, this is a slide that I had in my other video, so I want to update it. So I updated it, you know, and I made some changes to it, but it's just talking about how thoughts are things, you know, so we need to think of our thoughts as being actual things, actual energy. So we want to think about that instead of places and space and time, you know, so instead of thinking about Okay, so I'm going to go somewhere else as far away. We're not thinking about going anywhere because everything is right here. All of these parallel worlds are right on top of each other. So it's not a space or a time thing, something that you have to wait to do or something that you have to go far to do. It's actually right here. So what we're trying to do, we're just trying to, when you make a quantum leap, we're just trying to transition, kind of smoothly transition to that next world that's just a little bit better than ours, just a little bit different. We're not trying to do too much. We just want to, you know, keep doing that. And if we do that and just aware of it, it'll really take you, you know, what, where you need to go. And this happens all the time, hundreds of times a day. Each time you make a decision, each time you make an observation, this happens. So if we can just think about it, <laughs> sometimes you can actually go up and you can go back. You got a bad attitude. You got some stuff going on. You're thinking negatively. Then a lot of times what happened, you'll go back. And that's OK. You know, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. But you can also go back forward. So, yeah, I want to talk about that really in depth, like when we switched, how to tell when you actually switch to another reality and how to keep from going back and make sure you're going forward. All right. So, yeah, this is just a quick um, what I want to do about the macro. Just want to get out there, get that macro out there so I can tell you guys how it um, relates to the micro. And part three is going to be really in depth because these are going to be practical things that we can actually use to start doing this. And once you do, it's definitely going to change your life. So I want to thank you for joining K Paper Chase with Quantum Leap Part 2. Thanks for sounding off, and I will see you soon. Sound off. Peace.